Hi, I'm Jeff Foxworthy, and welcome to Gamekeeper Podcast. If you want to learn more about farming for wildlife and habitat management, then buddy, you are in the right place. Join the Gamekeeper crew direct from Mossy Oak Land Enhancement Studio as they discuss the latest wildlife and habitat management practices, news, and of course, hunting. There's no telling what you'll learn, but I'm going to tell you, I bet it's interesting. Enjoy. We're live in three, two, one. All right, everybody. Welcome <laughs> once again to West Point, Mississippi. Thank you, Mac, for He's that. He's fired up. Yes, again. he is. I was expecting Mac to not be able to talk today since he just got back from the dentist. Ah, how was that? Well, he's got that loudspeaker over there. Yeah, yeah it, it helps some. No, the dentist went good. Good, good dental hygiene. It's the key uh, to good living. I mean, it'll make me a little quicker in the turkey woods. <laughs> Mac, so. Mac, tell us about the dream you had last night. Well, I started dreaming about turkeys last night. <laughs> really? First one of the year. So it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's a couple sleeps away. Was you, it a good dream or year? a bad dream? I start dreaming about turkeys about this time every year. And then last night was the first one of the season. So so how was your hunt? <laughs> uh, unsuccessful. <laughs> oh, I don't know if that's a dream or not. That might be a nightmare. He must have been hunting in Mississippi. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> On the canal section. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, that look, this week, we, this is going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, I've been looking forward to this. We've got a, 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 a special right. guest here. We've got Jordan Blissett, who's also, also known. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Also <laughs> known horns, as Big Country. Was. was. He's not as big as he once was. He's quite agile looking over there now. He is. I'm, I'm excited about the spring. You're going to get after it, ain't you? Never been this this ready. Yeah. This agile. You're just going to climb up in a tree and pull them down. Oh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Jordan is, uh, you know, he was here for a number of years. Yeah. And we all got to hunt with him. He's a lot of fun to be around. A lot of fun. It, at that time, you were a camera guy, toting a bunch of heavy stuff around, filming deer and turkeys. Ain't nothing changed. And now, <laughs> and now you're well. You're with Primos, but are you? Are, do you have a diet biscuit company you work for? Or yeah, what, what? I help people and do that kind of thing. And I thought it was a waffle. Just whatever. You know? yeah. <laughs> okay, it's not a biscuit. No, no, I mean maybe you can make a biscuit out of about anything, as long as you got some some dough and some hot stuff, and, you know, microwave to put it in. <laughs> We had to try some of this. Well, you look great. <laughs> yeah, you do. I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And you, you've inspired a lot of people, including myself, to lose yeah, a few Bob, pounds. I mean, um, yeah. Dunley's been shaving it off like Yeah. That. Yeah, well, you're keto in it, though, aren't you? Well, you know, it's some of that stuff similar, but yeah, I'm... I'm uh, Cutting down on the old cars. Yeah, Jordan, among many other people, have been, you know, I, I decided I need to make a few life changes, and uh, it's working out. So I hope, I hope I can stick with it. How are you sleeping? Sleeping a little better. Yeah. yeah. You know, if you went back in time about three months ago, he'd look like two miles of he bad road. like, damn it. I ain't no <laughs> doubt about it. <laughs> yeah. No, but you look good now, well, Dad. That's good. I feel good. That's, that's the main part is how good I feel now. You know, yeah. just more, got more energy and sleeping better, like he said, and just being able to get around better. You don't realize how bad you are until you... Do that's it, exactly get right. better. And that's what old Tom Robertson said. Though. You know, on a, on a more... <laughs> I never knew. On a more serious note, I, I want to be able to take my grandkids hunting and stuff. So, be you, Dudley. Yeah, you are a forward thinker. Yeah. He yeah. He's a true conservationist. Yes. Well, that too, because I can't seem to kill anything. Yeah, you see him shoot with that red dot. You know <laughs> yeah. how what a good conservationist he is. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and so, if you see it, he came in with another shotgun today. Uh, he, he, little, he's got all kind of issues. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've about got the new. Uh, Red Dot sighted in that the Lindsay's gave me uh, as a prank last year. Yeah, we got some and, mayonnaise, and he got a red a dot. A red dot, yeah. <laughs> that doesn't seem fair yeah. at all. But, uh, yeah. So uh, so you're here, and Lake Pickle was uh They're gonna, on tour, man. Yeah, what, what, are, what are y'all doing? Well, we got a, I got a deal. Lake had this idea like two years ago, okay? And he wanted to like, man, I think it'd be great if we go talk turkey hunting with some people, something somewhere, and we got to thinking about it. And, uh, you know, we have a podcast with Primos, and uh, it's pretty much— Y'all have a podcast? Yeah, a little <laughs> small. But uh, a lot of our people love turkey hunting, just like here. Oh, you yeah. Know, we're, that's what our culture is about. No doubt. And uh, we got to looking at the ratings and stuff we had, 
And you can actually figure out, I guess, where the majority of the demographic comes from. And a lot of it's in Mississippi, and a lot of it's out of Starkville. They zoning in on us, Bobby. Uh, yeah. How can they do that, and we can't do we that? We just talk. We don't, I don't like know. do any research or anything. Yeah. This, this is Lake's deal. Like he's he's figured it out. But uh, we decided we were going to come up here last year, and uh, we wanted to do it in Starkville, and uh, didn't work out. Just you know, with everything going on, pandemic and all that. But we decided, uh, well, Lake did. I'm just here for the ride, but uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, we decided to put that together, and it's, uh, I think it's going to be pretty fun. Well, well appreciate uh, you coming by on the first tour stop. Yeah. Maybe and we'll our, have a road show one like, day, Bobby. It's like coming back home. Though, when oh, yeah, here, dude. You're part like, of this place. Ain't no question like, this about is, that. This is where I started, mm-hmm. you know, so it's, uh, it's like family. It really is. I remember when I left here that day, I was like, man, I don't, I don't know if I'm doing the right thing or what. Oh, you'll always yeah. be part of Mossy yeah. man. Yeah, that was a big deal. Speaking of him being like family and being here so long, the Human Resources Department wanted me to pass along a note. You still owe $380. At the retail for, store. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. We're going to need was, to collect that for yeah, leave today. I'm going to have to go down there and figure that out. <laughs> Does he get an employee discount? That's or? with he, his he discount. He did. Yeah. So, is it 380 with my old discount, or is that it? I need to take that off. I, I said probably put some interest <laughs> on there. You know, you know. Yeah, no well, doubt. Uh, yeah, your, your event, uh, our intern, John Wayne, a.k.a. Jack Collett, uh, apparently – he says everybody and their brother and sister are going tonight. He oh, even, man. He knows people that are driving, you know, from as far as Jackson and stuff. So. Well, that's pretty cool. We didn't know exactly what we're getting into. Still don't. But uh, You got some of those little cards to sign and hand out or something? No, oh, man. Okay. I ain't got nothing. <laughs> yes, he does. <laughs> you know, I bet he's got a Sharpie. Yeah. I bet he no, does. No, no, uh, no. Me and Little Dud are going to go, so we're looking. If if Rick's lets us in. Well, Rick's it, it camera lets you in. Um, it's an adult water. I've got a fake ID that uh, little Doug can take. Okay, (laughs) perfect. (laughs) Perfect. (laughs) Be sure he drives you home, too. Yeah. As far as I know, it's open to everybody, so it should be a good time. Y'all think they let Bobby get in? Uh, it's past my bedtime. Yeah, he I don't mean, go out past He be, better not wear any of his alma mater. Alma mater. How do you say that word? Alma mater. There it is. <laughs> there, you know, I've had all there you go. a hard time speaking English. But, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. But, uh, no, Auburn. Well, they kind of yeah. like him over there now since he's paid them so much money in tuition. Oh. They kind of let him in. <laughs> got a bypass. Yeah. Well, you, you know, lately, and I've turned into a basketball fan. Oh, I bet oh. you have. But they've kind of been breaking my heart lately. They've lost a couple of games. So. <laughs> so what are they now, number three? Oh, three. Number three. Dudley, I'm going to let you throw out the first question. Oh, wow. And, uh, are we what, quizzing? Yeah, are we going to get Lake on the phone? Yeah, he said he's ready, I think. So, so Lanny, why don't you call Lake? Lake. Lake uh, that, so uh, they're, like peas and, they're like peas and carrots. You hardly ever see one without the other. We're, we're partners in business. So that's what, what, I mean, we, me and him both started, you know, at Primo's, just doing camera work and we lived together at uh, our place we had cotton mouse for pretty much three years. I saw him more than I did my wife. So, but yeah, pretty much we do everything together. Good, yeah, well, good good. Speaking of, how is Will Primos doing? He's good. He uh he's enjoying life. He's kind of I don't uh, he still hunts with us on video fairly regular, especially turkey and uh, elk hunting. But uh you know he's uh, he's really gotten into upland hunting. And oh, really? shooting sports, like shotgun shooting, like clays and that kind of thing. That's what he does a lot now. He's still after it all the time. That's good. Well, we'll tell him we said hello. We thank a lot of him. So, yeah. Lanny? I'm hey, trying. Hey, I'm trying. Yeah, it's, I'm trying. I know it's just complicated dialing the phone. <laughs> My connected Richie. I'm just exp- impressed you can do that. That's high tech. It's, uh, it's taking a while. <laughs> I was at the NWTF thing in Nashville last weekend, and I went went up to the Primos booth, and like an idiot, I walked, and I was looking for Will Lawrence, and I said, any of y'all seen <laughs> Will around here? <laughs> and somebody looked at me funny or something, and he wasn't there that day, and, and I, I was like, I, they said no, and I said, huh, I figured he'd be here. I said, you're talking about Will Primos, right? And I was like, Will Lawrence. Like, yeah. Oh, nobody. Neither yeah, one yeah, of the we, wheels we just, were there. He probably thinks I'm trying to sell him a car warranty or something. Yeah. Oh, yeah. he's he's always doing real estate stuff, so he answers anything. Calls, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hello. What's going on? Well, you could say hello. <laughs> uh, what do you need? What do you need? Hello. <laughs> hello. <laughs> well, Lake, look here. We uh, I think we were supposed to call you about one thirty-five. I can't it? believe you didn't come eat lunch with us, Lake. 
I, look, if Jordan didn't throw anything out there that, that said anything like there was going to be food, because if they had known there was food, I probably would have made more of an effort to get there. Man, we had, what was it? Well, Polynesian tacos. Yeah, it was tacos with bison. Bison and wild boar tacos. <laughs> some homemade guacamole. Yeah, guac was good. Yeah. Haitian beans. I took some pictures. <laughs> I, is that what he I, said? Yeah, yeah, well, he told me we had Haitian beans. I don't know what that is, but it was delicious. Was Haitian beans. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, our chef has got some exotic taste. Yes, he does. Oh, yeah. <laughs> is, is eclectic the right word? Yeah, he is eclectic. Well, like, we wish you were here, but we're glad you're on the phone. And, uh, we, look, we were just— Are you in Starville yet? Well, that's the thing. You know, I was like, I'm, I'm trying to figure out who's getting the shorter end of this deal here because, you know, <laughs> like, Gordon's getting to sit, sit in there in the studio and eat all the food. And, like, well, I'm— I'm at Rick's in Starkville trying to get everything set up for the shindig tonight. So I'm like, you know, hey, someone's got to do the hard part, I guess. I know how it is. I've been working with Bobby for years. So <laughs> yeah. trust me, like I'm right there with you. I've already been picking out all his gamekeeper stuff I'm going to take home with me. <laughs> he's got a hell of a sack of stuff he's getting out of here with. Uh-oh. And uh, Jordan's going to get you all those camo tablecloths, too. So he's, he's earning They're needed. it. They're needed. Earning had a, it. We had a request come in earlier. Lake. It's like, can you get some tablecloths? You well, happen to be it. in the right spot for tablecloths. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I figured as much. We got I a tablecloth closet. <laughs> well, look, yeah. we're we're big fans of what you guys do. We're, uh, obviously, we, we're, we've we loved Will Primos for a long time, the Primos brand and y'all's calls and what you do. And we listen to your podcast. We're just proud to have y'all. We wanted to ask you some turkey hunting questions, and, and uh, well, we're going to let Dudley. He's... Uh, to throw one out here right out of the gate. He's been working on questions to ask y'all for about three or four days. <laughs> Lanny, Lanny was painting the bathroom about 10 minutes ago. so It doesn't look that good either, by the way. Uh, if you want to know how prepared we usually are. I know y'all, both of you guys, really well, but uh, I'd just kind of like to hear a, a brief introduction about how you guys got started um, hunting, you know, uh, did you start when you were a kid with your dad or your granddad, or uh, did you start when you were in college? You know, just just uh, Jordan, why don't you start and uh, just tell me a little bit about you know maybe who was a major influencer on you or just something like that. Yeah, well, well with me, I didn't uh, just hunting in general. I grew up in a deer hunting family, and my dad was huge into deer hunting. Not so much the killing deer part, but he loves to hunt and. Uh, He's had a t- trouble getting the, the dots connected as far as going hunting and killing deer. He uh he likes to go, I'll put it like that. And uh, he's always been fun to hunt with and grew up, you know, going to deer camp on the weekends. And this one of them deals, it was ingrained in me at a young age, you know, deer camps on the weekends during the fall, and that's what you look forward to. Grew up uh, hunting on national forest land, running dogs, riding horses, and Everybody had a three-wheeler, you riding around, and, you know, just I feel like that culture has bypassed us. Uh, we kind of need to bring that back in a way. I'll oh, yeah, throw I that mean, out. Hagel, Hagel, we all, that's it, how we it all It was started. more of a, you know, a community thing and just a, a just a hanging out with everybody more so than it was like going to kill a 150-inch deer. That was the goal. Then it was the goal, what we, what we eating for supper tonight, you know. Now, who's cooking supper? That was a big deal. Y'all had CB radios and uh, hollering at each other. To, I can oh. see Lanny with his Bronco and a whip antenna on the back. I'll tell you what, my dad had a bad daddy Bronco and a big whip antenna on it. <laughs> <laughs> what was your handle? Uh, I didn't have a handle. I was too young. I'm like Jordan. I, that's how I was raised up. I was introduced to deer hunting. It was, you know, dog hunting in trucks and CBs and the social aspect. Of Same it, here. Community aspect of it, anything else. So. But, well, the first deer I killed was on a dog drive. Hey, this is Dudley from Native Nurseries. I spend a lot of time deep in the woods looking for special trees. Onyx keeps me on track and helps me be sure I can find them again and my way out. Try it out for yourself and see. Use coupon code MOSSYOAK to save 20% on your Onyx subscriptions. So when did you get more into the like the turkey thing and and what what you're doing now I, did did that happen when you came up here to go to college and well um i didn't i didn't go to school up here or anything as uh but with me getting into turkey hunting it was more of a uh, seeing it and seeing people doing it and wanting to get into it and uh i decided we were gonna go me and my dad he was like he's more willing to take me 
but he didn't know anything about it either. And uh, we uh, we went to Walmart, and I saved up the following the fall before turkey season. I bought a dove gun, twelve gauge Charles Daly, two hundred ninety nine dollars at Walmart. And uh, anyway, I I decided I want to go turkey hunting the next spring since I had a gun, and uh, we decided to go and went to our deer lease. And uh, I was 15 at the time, so I'd been deer hunting for a while. You know, I've been going to deer camp and that kind of thing since I could walk pretty much, but I'd never, they'd never stepped foot in the woods in the spring. Decided we were gonna go because we've been watching on TV and videos and that kind of thing. And uh, it, uh, one of them beginner's luck things, I killed a turkey the first morning I ever hunted. Oh my goodness. And uh, neither one of us knew what we were doing. I just had a little old box call I got from Walmart and, uh, Sat on this logging road and didn't even know any turkeys were there. It just looked like a good spot. And uh, started yelping and never heard turkey gobble. But I was looking one way down the road. My dad was sitting across the road looking the other way. We was ambushing. That's right. And uh, I seen a turkey come down the road, and he was strutting. I was like, oh, here he come. <laughs> <laughs> this thing worked. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, anyway, I pulled my gun up, and my dad was like, man, what you doing over there? Man, you haven't seen nothing. You don't see nothing. Cause he's looking the opposite direction. Yeah. And uh, the turkey, I don't know how far it was, probably 30, 40 yards, and I shot and killed him. And, uh, you know, at that point, it's just like, man, this is easy. Yeah, I'm a good turkey hunter. <laughs> yeah. and, I should uh, be doing this more often. <laughs> I, I, it was the coolest thing. Me and Lake talked about this a couple of weeks ago. And, uh, you know, back then, you did something like that. You got your, your picture in the newspaper. Oh, yeah. And I thought I'd done something special. I didn't know Mom and Daddy had requested my picture being in the newspaper, you know. And uh, that just kind of set a fire in me, and I, I figured out real fast throughout that season and the following two or three seasons that went after it that uh, it wasn't as easy as that. <laughs> Had a lot of lot of learning curve, but for me, when it really, really started clicking, and I really learned that this is something I'm really passionate about, was when I started working here and getting to go with y'all and like Bob Walker and Paul Buskey and all these guys. I mean, I had turkey hunted and, you know, I felt like I was a turkey hunter, but I wasn't until I started realizing the culture of it. Because if you don't, if you don't grow up in that turkey hunting culture, you don't realize like what it is until you're around these people that live and breathe it. Yeah. And they, and they won't talk about it most of the time. It's so secretive. That's Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, that was when I started here. Well, everybody, everybody's talking about it now. Yeah. When I started yeah. here in 2013, after I, I finished that spring, I was like, I love it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you talk about the difference between the fall woods and the spring woods. There's a big difference there. Mm-hmm. I know the things I get most enjoyable about it for sure. What are the chances of him just walking out there with his dad? Sitting down in the right spot, yelping a few times, and that turkey walking up there like that. That's I, sound like well, he time. said beginner's luck, and it seems to happen like that. Uh, you know, when I when I first, got, I bet your dad was shocked. Wasn't oh he? yeah, we both were. I was like, yeah, I, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> of course, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> like, he still like TV. that. I that's, bet. that's part of the deal. They they give you a little bit, and then then it gets hard. You know, yeah. and looking back on it peak. now, it sounds funny, but I think it was. You know, it had to have like you know, Lord opening up a door at that that's point, right. uh, instilling that want to in me, and you know, if I if I would have you know, win a season or two and didn't have any luck and didn't have anybody teach me, I may have not ever even got into it that heavy, you know. And just looking at it now, it's like, well, that kind of where it all started. That's cool. Really cool. Well, Lake, your turn. Gotcha. So, uh, Jordan and I, and I are alike in the sense that, I mean, you know, if you grow up in central Mississippi, getting exposed to hunting culture isn't some kind of odd thing, you know, where right. you're – we were your uh, Labor Day weekend dove hunters. We were your first uh, weekend of rifle season deer hunters and maybe another deer trip in January. But that, that really was all there was to it. And I kind of got more interested in it, you know, as I got a little bit older. Uh, and I've heard buddies talk about turkey hunting, you know, that was introduced to it by their dad or whatever. And it wasn't, you know, my, my dad was just more of a fisherman. That's, you know, that's kind of where the name Lake came from, to be honest. But uh, uh, I, it was, I'd heard friends talk about it, and uh, we were on a family vacation. And I can't, I think we were either, the family vacation route ended up taking us through Memphis, Tennessee. And in Memphis, they had a Bass Pro Shop. And this is before we had a Bass Pro Shop in Mississippi, and that was a big deal. And so we decided we was going to stop and I happened to walk by and there was a a guy doing a video seminar on turkey hunting. And he was a Primo's 
uh, they were called Primo's Hunting Calls at the time. There's a Primo's Hunting Calls Pro Staffer. And I just see all this stuff set out on the table in a video screen. I'm like, cool, I'm going to watch this. And so I sit down and I watch. That's the first time I'd actually like watch a turkey hunt unfold, you know. And I see this process happening and I, you know, the guy's making this noise and the thing's gobbling back. And I was just mind blown at the thought, at the thought of he's actually, you know, talking to what he's hunting. And so that kind of lit the first spark, so to speak. And when I went back home, uh, I started asking buddies and everything. And a friend of mine loaned me a uh, Primo's VHS tape. It was a double stack VHS. It's called the Truth 12. And I watched that thing so many times, and I started begging folks that, you know, will you take me turkey hunting? Because me or my dad didn't know where to start. Uh, my uncle tried to take me a couple times one spring, but he wasn't a turkey hunter either. Um, and then through the church I went to, I met a man named Keith Polk. And um, Keith found out I wanted to go turkey hunting. Keith was and is a very successful turkey hunter. And uh, he cleared it with my parents, and they were like, yeah, we'd love for you to take him. He really wants to go. And he took me the Saturday of youth season in Mississippi. I was 12 years old. And um, we didn't hear anything at first light, uh, walked a little bit, made another setup, didn't hear anything, go to another spot. He, you know, we get to this spot, and he says, we just need to set up here for a while. And he goes to call in, and we actually heard a hen start answering us, which, I mean, the hunt could have ended right there at the time, and I would have been completely satisfied because I was just like, oh, my gosh, we're hearing a turkey. You know, a hen jumping back this this is crazy cool and uh i still remember keith telling me he was like you know beaver still and when i tell you to kind of shift to the right i think i'm hearing a turkey drumming and in my 12 year old mind i'm like what does a turkey drumming mean you know i don't even know i don't even know what that word is and uh but i could tell the tone in keith's voice things had gotten more serious and all of a sudden in this um, adjacent ridge to us. It's like it's, it's like this gobbler just walked out on stage for his grand appearance at some show. I mean, he's just there strutting. And uh, he walks down the, the ridge and he's strutting and he gets behind the tree and when he gets behind the tree Keith yelps to him on a mouth call real soft and here he comes just figure eight and down that ridge. I can picture it in my head like it was just burned into my brain. And uh I was shaking so hard. I remember shaking so hard. I was thinking in my head, I was like, he's going to see me. There's no way this turkey's not going to see me. I'm shaking too much. But finally, he says, you know, I'm going to make him stick his head up for you good to shoot. I'm like, yeah. And he clucks at him, up, sticks his head, and I shoot. The turkey flops over, and I ran down there, and we commenced to high-fiving and hugging. And I called my dad and told him we got one. And I I was, uh, if anyone understands, you know, if anyone ever says, you know, they got bit by the bug, uh, that that happened to me that day. I mean, I, I never really let up from that point. I mean, obviously, I was 12 years old, so there was only so much I could do as far as going turkey hunting, but I made it a staple of my, you know, springtime activities ever since that day. Uh, and then, you know, just inundating myself with watching count. I don't know how many truth videos I watched, but uh, that's kind of how it all started for me. And now look at you. <laughs> you know, at 12, I bet, I bet that turkey was as big as he was. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. I, yeah. I wonder how many people have uh, the majority of those videos, like, memorized. I, I know I had several of them. Where yeah. I, I know that's what you did. Well, you sat there and watched well, them, that's for sure. Well, I, I'll tell you this. There was a clip. Um, there was a clip of one video. Brad Ferris shoots a turkey. And when he picked it up, the turkey had some big old spurs, and he's looking at the camera, and he says, man, he's got some good carrying handles on him. <laughs> and uh, Keith had a little home video camera that he was filming with that day that I shot that turkey. Now, granted, he double punched, so all you get is the hen yelping beforehand, and then a, then like the video jumps, and then I'm running to the turkey. But when I pick the turkey up for the first time, I hold up the spurs that were not very long granted but i said he's got some good carrying handles because i was trying to be i was trying to quote the video oh my trying goodness. to be like Brad. That's, yeah that's 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 priceless Love stuff it. right there wow yeah well, I think, well that was your first turkey hunt late no i i hunted i mean probably the first wrong. one well i mean i technically went the season before when i was 11 but that was like with my dad and uh, my uncle and none of us knew what was going on. We were just giving it a try. That yeah. was my first time to go with, you know, folks that knew what was going on to some degree. So Jordan does have that one up on me. I didn't kill one the first time I went. 
Got him. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't let him hold that one too 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 high over you, Lake. I liked your story. That was a good one. Yeah. <laughs> well, I appreciate it. So, uh, Lanny, where you? you uh, what about you? You got a question here? I, I mean, mine was. You know, I, I was kind of like uh, Dudley. I actually want to know how both of them kind of got involved in the sport, uh, and then uh, just kind of what's going on with this live event in Starville. I don't know. We, uh, I had this idea like year one or two of us doing this podcast, and I was just like, man, that would be really cool to do. But I just, you know, the timing wasn't right, and I, I just finally we got to a point, and that. Uh, we we always with our podcast for for whatever reason when we start releasing turkey episodes our our an, our downloads and analytics whatever you want to call them get higher than they do any other time of year so I was like now's the time and if we're going to do one we might as well do it during the spring and if we're going to do one in Mississippi you might as well go to Starkville because everyone that's going to be doing the live event went you know either lived up there or went to school there and I know. There's a hub of turkey hunters in Starkville. So it was just like a, trying to stack the odds in my favor that we might have at least five people show up to listen to us talk. Who knows? I bet you have more than five. <laughs> <laughs> my dad's coming and uh, Hunter McCool's coming. So that's Dudley. Dudley. There's three. Hunter McCool. The coolest name in the oh, hunting industry. Yeah. Oh, Hunter McCool. <laughs> Remember when remember when Eva Shockey did a post about that? She's like, This dude's name is Hunter McCool. I, I, His ego I do still ain't swollen back down. Uh, I do look, because uh, I used to have a I had a king size crush on Eva back then. And so I saw her make that post and I was like, Man, that's lucky. Hunter McCool. Yeah. Yeah. Oh Lord. Well, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward to that tonight. And then I'm going to some kind of round table discussion about yeah, you know, maybe turkey the, summit tomorrow in the Jackson. future of the turkeys uh, in Mississippi. And some folks are going to get together and uh, I'm going to try to do more listening than uh, than gawking. But uh, it, it'll be interesting to hear what what folks are saying about what what they think may need to be done. Or, yeah, the mm-hmm. uh, MBWFP is doing a really good job. They're hosting these, and we went to waterfowl summits. We're doing, they're doing turkey summits where they bring in agencies and the public, uh, and uh, a lot of the, the conservation organizations too, and just have roundtable discussions. So I hate I can't yeah. make it. I'm super pumped. Dudley's going to be there. He can add more to yeah. the discussion. Than Hopefully, I don't hit a deer on the way home like <laughs> yeah. I did at the last one and <laughs> ruined Bobby's radiator. Yeah. Well, okay. That, so that uh, that radiator is still a, a nightmare for it. it actually for, is. Yeah. <laughs> Look. So where, where I want to go, I want to start off with a question, and, and I'm hoping you guys. Uh, I've gotten to hunt with Jordan a time or two, and we've had we've had some really good times in the woods. And uh, uh-huh. there's one time I can remember where I knew where a turkey was roosted, and I took country in there with me. And I said, we need to set up, we need to just wait right here till he gobbles and then we can adjust where, because he's going to be somewhere up and down this creek. And we were both sitting there, Lanny, on, on a, you know where the spot is, but we were both what sitting there. About. And I, I can. Well, you were there, weren't you, Lanny? Was I there? I was you weren't there. with us. It oh, was just the two of us. You was there. You <laughs> was on the property, I yeah. think. Yeah. But I can remember looking at Country's eyes and he's look, and, and we were both saying to each other, do you hear that? Mm-hmm. And there was, a, we could hear a turkey <laughs> drumming in the dark. Oh and, no! And and it ended up being right above us. And at this time, I Ooh. think Country weighed a lot more than he weighs right now. I was about three hundred. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> and we and we were sitting in the water, and we just had to slither like snakes. And that turkey ended up gobbling right there above us too. Yeah, we well, ended up playing with that sucker for about two or three hours that morning. I remember we I, I, we saw him, and he had some hens. He was on that little old SMZ, and. Uh, we I filmed him for a while, just strutting around him hens about a hundred yards through the woods. And, uh, yeah, that was, he was a bad one. But look, I, where, so where I'm going with this, I wanted to ask, and, and I've always wondered. So with all the different mouth calls that you guys make, I mean the single read, double read. When you start looking at all these exotic cuts that are on the top, that top read. Mm-hmm. So what's going on there? What if, if a guy looks at that? Does he know? Okay, I'm gonna be able to cut on this or. I mean, and what what's the difference in in some of those uh, wilder cuts? So uh, a lot of them are based on where your channel of air blows down your tongue. So <clears throat> the way the uh, mouth call is designed is your air flow. You want it to flow over the open space that's been cut out. 
But far as like cutting and stuff like that, like a diamond cut, like a V cut, those are the ones you can just hammer on because they're easy to cut on because there's no big space cut out. But uh, like if you're trying to fine tune like a Yelp or something you can be more versatile on, the best way to do it is uh, is uh, if you put a call in your mouth without any reeds on it and you actually hiss like a snake, like you can feel on your tongue where that air pocket is flowing down it, whether it be left center, center, or right center. And uh, that's kind of where you can start your journey trying to figure out what cut you need. Like a bat wing, your uh, airflow is either going to be on left center or right center because that's where the cuts are, right? Because they're, they're, uh, it's cut out on both sides with a, a tongue in the middle. Same way with the WP-1. You know, it's just a little bit different because uh, it's going to give you a different noise or a different, uh, I guess, uh, ability to cut or whatever on it because of the thickness of that tongue on that call. But that's uh, that's where you really start to fine-tune it is when you figure out where that, uh, that airflow comes down your tongue and you figure out calls to go from the from there like a ghost cut it's cut out in the middle so it's made for somebody that blows directly down the middle of their tongue okay well that that makes sense i, did, I didn't ever have never had it explained to me like that mm -hmm. but it, and so a lot of mornings in the dark I, i'm sitting there trying to pull reeds apart because they stick right. together have you got a right right what do you guys do there i usually try to remember to unstick them before i get in the woods That's the yeah. I mean, some, yeah some people usually... yeah go ahead like I said usually because like I've I've made that mistake enough times and I normally rely on using the mouth yell for so much. I mean that's probably ninety percent of the time that's what I'm using. I try to get into a habit where I get those reeds unstuck before I even get out of the truck. They're normally that's that's the plan anyway. Mm -hmm. If you got too much sugar in your coffee, it'll get a little bit stuck a little <laughs> later too. Yeah, so you can get a little bit stuck and get a little bit gritty. Yeah, garbled like, on sound a like bit. You're, Yeah, it'll feel like you're yelping on the beach. You don't want that. Yeah, but. Well, so sometimes you get a mouth call and it bush everything. It you th I think it sounds right. It may not sound right if it's somebody else listening to it, but I like the way it sounds. But then I get so worried about it that I'm on blow on Booger it too it much and, yeah. and then and when i'm stretching it apart trying to get the i'm just worried to death it. it's going to tear, tear and something. it only yeah. seems like there's about you know there's a there there once you break them in uh, for me personally there's you know i don't know it depends on how much i'm hunting but there's a sweet time for them and right then they kind of play yep and some of them yep, vary 100%. on some of them vary on you know the quality of latex yeah. that's used or yep. prophylactic whatever it may be and uh Another thing people, a lot of people don't realize on calls is like they're all hand cut as far as the cuts on. There's no way of like mass producing punching those things perfect in. cuts on a call. So it depends on who makes that call. Like with us, we've got several people that make mouth calls that down there in Brookhaven. But, uh, you know, there may be a little bit of variance in each particular call because it's not perfect. They're being human made, right. you know. So that's something else because you may buy five of the same calls and they're all similar, but you'll have one out of that five that are just like, this is the one. Yeah, three of them need pitching and two yep. of them are good. Right. <laughs> so if I was wanting just a cluck, would you would it, would it you say like a single reed is where just a really soft cluck? Yeah, is something that, that doesn't take much air pressure because uh, – Yeah, probably a two-reeded call. Yeah, a two-reeded call or uh, just a like a, a diamond cut, V cut. You know, that's something that doesn't – doesn't have a whole lot of high end on it because it's not a very big open space in it. And mm -hmm. uh, that's something that you can use. But just far as like soft, easy clucking, like a two-reeded uh, bat wing call, something like that. Or something that's got all prophylactic reeds. Mm -hmm. Sometimes if it's got a if it's got more latex or like a thicker latex top reed, it's got more, the call's built to have more backbone to it. If you're just trying to cluck real soft, something with all pro reeds, you can usually get a lot you can get a lot more finesse with it. You can get them real, real soft, soft turkey sounds. Because yeah. the way, you know, the prophylactic, what he's talking about is a real thin type. It's a natural latex. Like, it's, it's, I don't remember where they get it from, but it's natural. And, like, latex is actually, like, produced, like, made. And uh, so you're talking about the clear reeds versus clear the colored. Clear versus colored. colored. And, right. Uh, you know, they're all different thicknesses, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000. Well, all that makes such a big difference in how much air pressure it takes to vibrate that call because that's what makes the noise is the call actually vibrating as the air is pushed between it and your tongue. Mm -hmm. And uh, the thicker it is, the more air pressure it takes to make it vibrate. You know, you know anybody that's uh, still blowing the true double? 
Oh, yeah. All right. We, oh, so, yeah. we sold out of them, like, <laughs> the first afternoon Did in you? Nashville this year. Yeah. It don't matter. Like, that call, you could we could stop producing it for a decade, and somebody still is going to come, you know, we're either a vendor or somebody at the end of the PF show is going to come by and go, do y'all have any true doubles? On like that true double. Live and die. Yeah, people live and uh, die by that. That was the first brand, you know, it was turkey calls, then somebody was blowing. They're just like, I'm blowing a turkey call, I'm buying a dub- diaphragm call, yeah. and it's like, what are you blowing? I'm blowing a true double. That was a what? mouthful, <laughs> too. Oh, yeah. yeah double Bill Suggs brand. still loves them. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a prophylactic call, too, mm-hmm. and that's why it's so good for so many people. It doesn't even have a cut in it, but yeah, it, those stacked stack reeds, reeds are yeah. broken apart where – that's oh, where you get your vibration oh, 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 from. Yeah. yeah, it's a real hollow sound, and just yeah, like, just you, like can, you can hammer on it. Mm-hmm. So look, you guys travel all over turkey hunting from Florida to out west, and incidentally, well, our phone doesn't ever. Does your phone? No, I don't know what happened. You know, he comes up how much he does this, and all these times the dummy line. Make sure you guys have our phone number. Hey, I ain't uh, I ain't had a phone call a couple years ago. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. phone rings two ways, don't yeah. it? You need, some, you need some trees to take home. <laughs> yeah. So, is there anything that you guys have noticed about properties that that uh, that a guy could, you know, kind of file in his mind that's where you're saying, boy, this property has X, Y, and Z, so I know it's going to have turkeys. Mm-hmm. And are, are there things that you've seen people manage and do that you could share with us that guys that are listening could potentially do to their properties? Man, it seems like the places, especially in the southeast, that have the, the best turkey hunting usually have a diversified landscape. It's usually a, a good amount of mature woods plus thicket for nesting, and then they take care of them for burning and all that. And uh, just, I mean, it seems like the more diversified a place is, the better it holds turkeys. I mean, with yeah. when I say diversified, I mean like 60 percent open timber, and the rest of it's mixed between thickets and smaller canopy stuff and that kind of thing. Yeah, uh, I, I remember last year we did this. We did a podcast episode on specifically on like finding turkeys, and some of the things we keyed in on. I mean, it's nothing, you know, it's nothing that's no huge secret. But it's like if you find these hardwood drainages, you know, hardwood where the creek is, and then when they transition into different, um, you know, like transition into pines or something like that. Like Jordan said, finding habitat diversity. Well, like. If luck wouldn't have it, we do that podcast episode, and a few weeks later, I was hunting with Brad, and he shoots this turkey, and like where he was sitting, we were sitting on the edge of these big open hardwoods next to these smaller sage pines, and turkeys that we shot, we killed them shortly after fly down, and they were roosted over a creek, so it was like all those (laughs) things happening right there. I mean, like I took a video of it, because I was like, man, you can't plan this up. I mean, it's just... You draw up like, hey, where would some turkeys be hanging out at? Right there. You know, it's just those things that you look for. And uh, I actually had a lease in Holmes County for a couple of years. And, like, I kept – it was like one of these deals that's like, this place looks perfect. And there's got to be turkeys on it, so I'm going to keep on leasing it. And never, ever found a turkey there. Mm -hmm. We did find a hen there last year. But it's like – 30, 40 year old pine timber with some hardwoods. I mean, gorgeous place, but it did not have thickets and did not have a live creek running through it. And that's the mm-hmm. only thing I can account for. I mean, this is in Turkey Country. You know where it is, or real close to where it is, Dudley. And uh, every, everywhere around it had turkeys, but this one particular place, I mean, just for whatever reason, they did not like it. And I think that's what it was. Maybe the live creek aspect of having mass trees up and down that creek to feed on and, and, uh, a lack of nesting habitat. Yeah, I think y'all hit the nail on the head. And uh, first thing I'm looking for is a is a creek mm-hmm. yep. with, with some time. open yeah. stuff. Every time. Yeah. But so guys, so y'all manage a lot of properties that, that y'all hunt on. Mm-hmm. Are y'all seeing fewer birds here in the deep south? Oh, as a whole, yes. To answer your question, mm-hmm. now there are pockets that are not you're not seeing that on. Uh, just, I think it really just depends on the landscape around you and what your neighbors are doing, that kind of thing. Like uh, where we have our camp now at Kudzu Bluff, I mean, it's, I would say it's really good turkey hunting. Um, but I don't think – I haven't hunted there long enough to compare it to five years ago, so I don't know that. It's good now for what I'm used to. But uh, for, for instance, where I grew up hunting in Scott County, I hunted there for 10 or 15 years. 
I have seen a drastic decrease in numbers there. But I can I can reference that because I hunted it for so long. Sure. Are, yeah. are are y'all doing anything like saying, hey, I'm not we're not going to kill as many birds on this property as we have in the past? Or what I I mean, Lake can answer this too. But one thing we've always done is kind of get a a tally on how many mm-hmm. you have and then divide that by two. Is kind of what we go off of the best you can because you I mean you're going to lose some just for the natural movement of turkeys from winter to spring patterns you know they break up and some two or three gobblers out of your six just leave and never come back till that fall so that's what we've always tried to do is kind of half of what you have and that's what you take what mm-hmm. if there's a whole bunch <laughs> yeah <laughs> call your buddies at that point i guess uh, we had not had that problem uh, yeah, they ain't got too many down there do they? No, i'm <laughs> thinking about cutting lanny's quota in half anyway hey, yeah, you cut it in half <laughs> every year <laughs> Yeah. Well, you know, it's it's interesting. I mean, we're we're, we're hearing this. We're, we've seen it on a couple of places, but yeah, but, no, boy, I think everybody too. really needs to pay attention. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it was like it's funny. That yeah. Last year we talked a lot about you know what was going on and 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 few were seeing, but uh, the enthusiasm of this spring has got us fired up. I know. I mean, I've seen you know more uh, young turkeys than I thought I would. Uh, from last season to now, so I'm optimistic. And that is something I saw last year too. As preparing like fall food plots and stuff, I saw a lot of poach running yeah. around, a so, lot more than yeah. usual. And it's hard, you know, when those hatches happen. You know, it's still two years before you know right. you're 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 really seeing the results of that. So, and yeah, this is just observational, but it seems like in the last I don't know two years, you see more smoke in the air in February. Yeah. Uh, oh man. More people yeah. talking about trapping. More people talking about habitat. And it used to be, uh, until recently, I I using the word deer centric uh, management. Yeah, no doubt. And, and there there seems to be more of a shift and more more of a concern and more people focusing on the big picture diversity and turkeys. Yeah. Uh, to be more specific, it, it's just it's in the air everywhere. We were talking about this yeah. the other day, Lake and I, and uh, you know, to, you hear a lot of times about like what they're doing on public lands and this. They need to do a better job of making the habitat better, blah blah blah. But at the end of the day, in Mississippi, I'm speaking for Mississippi, uh, it's ninety something percent privately owned. Yep. The only way you're going to move the needle is by getting the private ownership going the right direction, and speaking we're seeing more and more of that. Speaking of that, what have y'all seen this latest thing where there's a senator here in Mississippi wanting to oh yeah privatize Black Prairie? Oh, Black Prairie. No, oh yeah, it's a hot topic. Oh, Next yeah, week is gonna blow up. <laughs> they just talked yeah, about I, it recently on uh, on their podcast. Okay, yeah. it's a hot topic here. I mean, it's blowing up. Of course, well, it's you, a local uh, spot for us too. Where I mean, all of us have taken our kids out there dove hunting and signed up for deer hunts and everything else. So I, I don't get that. Right, and Lake, uh, right. Lake actually right. dove pretty deep into it and got some real facts on it. Give so us he- a scoop, Lake. I, th- I'll say this, like I did, the same thing I said, I did the amount of research that, that I needed to do without like outing anybody that I can confidently say, because there was a lot of hearsay. There were folks asking us to talk to talk about that and everything. And my whole point was, I'm like, I'm not afraid to talk about it. I, it's just so easy in this world that you can get the wrong information and spread mm-hmm. it without even meaning to. That's right. So I'm like, I'm going to make sure that I have the facts. And I I know for a fact, because of who I spoke with directly, um, what the motive is here. And like, this is nothing more than an attempt to, this is taking the hunting access from Blackberry WMA away from the public and putting under private ownership for no other reason than that. That there was like some hearsay floating around that they were just trying to make it more accessible. That is false. It, it is trying to be put under private land ownership so and, and hunting access be taken away from the public. And like what I said was when we covered like it's not like anyone here and I think y'all are, y'all feel this way as well. No one is against private land. Like no, these private no. land owners, we're in the real estate but, biz yeah. and y'all are too. Yeah. Yeah, likewise. So it's like, but you got to find that balance. And when you have, uh, you know, lands like that that are set aside for public access, public recreation, you don't mess with that. That's not for sale. I don't care who it is. It's not for sale, you know? I can speak personally about this one because they have a lot of youth dove hunts. I've been out there at a lot of youth events. And looking at the people that attend those events, they aren't. I was was the anomaly. You know, I'm obviously big into hunting and conservation and want to raise my kids. And the majority of the people there were youth that wanted to get involved in the sport. And their parents might not have ever been. 
Uh, so it's a huge uh -huh. outreach. It's a huge way to build hunters. Um, and we don't know that that young kid that's signing up for that draw hunt and wants to experience it could be the next Aldo Leopold. We don't know. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's yeah. hugely important. Um, you know, this this sport that we all love and endure so much is limited by one thing. And that's access. So Mississippi has done a really good job up to this point, in my opinion. Obviously, everybody this spring heard about it and signing up for these daggum public tags, but and that's a whole other subject. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, I'm really proud of our state and the way they do it. And to take away one of those land assets would be a detriment. That's opinion. backing up. Yeah. That's backing well, up. Yeah. That's exactly what it's so, doing. And we can't do that. Yeah. And look, so, again, so I'm Jordan, so Jordan, when we get off this thing, I think it would be appropriate for you to tell those guys about the conversation I had. Yeah, you know, I will. I think they well, would. Be I've heard the other side know. of that, like you know, some of the guys I talked around here, like, oh no, they're going to increase access. I'm like, dude, you have lost your mind. Yeah, you and know, I heard right. it. So the guy, yeah, yeah, that's the guy that told me that. I said, dude, you're getting sold wolf tickets a hundred percent. Like yeah. that ain't happening. That ain't so, happening. That ain't, that's not the reason things go. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, Jordan, I would, yeah, Jordan, tell them guys that. Yeah, I'll I'll say this that I I think we need more public land absolutely mm -hmm. yeah i mean access i mean guys we, yeah, we got to realize that that's where the next generation comes that's, from that's exactly and uh, right. from an ecological standpoint not we probably need to move on in a sec but uh at, that is in the blackland prairie that's right and we only we have like less than one percent of prairies left, left that aren't being farmed or put in trees uh -huh. or something and so just from that standpoint it needs to stay Protected, and I hadn't drawn a deer hunt there yet. I mean, I'm still <laughs> yeah. still waiting. I'll try. Got some big deer there. Yeah, I got some giant deer there. I've been trying forever. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, look, I got another couple of questions. Lake, do you need to go? Well, Dudley's holding up a note to me that he, I think he's your business <laughs> yeah, manager. Well, I'm just worried. about to kick him out. You might need to be getting a, <laughs> putting. Uh, yeah. You got a meeting with Rick? Yeah, <laughs> yeah man. Well, I know. Yeah, on, on one hand, I'm like the other guys, the Spring Legion guys, they, they're they handling the setup stuff right now. So I'm like, well, you know, if we're on this thing longer, that means I don't have to set <laughs> there up. There you go. Well, let's keep but, on talking. But <laughs> <laughs> well, stay with us just a little bit longer. This won't last long. So, uh, yeah, look, I've got, yeah, yeah, a, I've, yeah. I've got a question for, for – and if you need to drop off, just – Hang up. Just hang up. So we're, <laughs> you won't be the first person yeah. that's done that. Bobby is yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, Lanny, you didn't have to bring all that up. <laughs> so, look, you guys, y'all go hard at it, but have y'all learned when you walk into a – well, you know there's going to be a bird down here in this general area, and you walk in there and sit down, and you – and he gobbles, and you move, and you do that one move, and you get up there close. Have you, have you guys learned something that you could share with us – that seems to work most of the time. Do you, do you guys wait on him to get on the ground to call to him? Do you tree call? Do you avoid tree calling? Do you always do a fly down cackle? Is there? Can you kind of go through your repertoire of here's repertoire. what I need to do? Man, I, it's hard. You can't to give all the secrets it's, away. It's Bob. like hard to answer that because I don't know if I've ever done the same thing twice. That's exactly right. Yeah, it's I, super situational. Yeah, it's just. I mean, with us, I think. Uh, you know, the more reps you get, the more you learn how to read the situation. Now, yes, I would say some of them, exact same scenario worked, but those are not back-to-back-to-back. -to -back -to -back. Uh, you know, what I like to do in the early spring, just put it in the the breeding cycles of our eastern wild turkey in Mississippi. You know, early in the spring, they're grouped up, and there's usually multiple gobblers together with a big group of hens, and they're just doing their thing for the first two or three hours in the morning. So, I mean, that time of year, I kind of – depends on what the cover and terrain will allow, but if I'm not within 150 of them, I feel like I'm not ever going to get in the game starting off in the morning. So that's that's something that we try to do a lot is – Try to push the issue without pushing the issue, if that makes sense. Like try to like try to get where you think you're going to be in the game because a lot of times that time of year, that uh, if you're not in the direction they're heading already when they hit the ground, you're going to be out of it. So that's I'll, a, I'll 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 you know kind of going off of what he just said. As far as you know, like George said, y'all know this too. I have yet to find something that works every time, but. I've learned, and it's again, it's it's just through repetition and and sitting down to turkeys and going as many times as you possibly can. But I've learned that there's a beauty in 
figuring out what those turkeys are naturally trying or wanting to do. And if you can take advantage of that, then you are you're putting yourself way ahead of, you know, just really trying to force a turkey to come this way, which you sometimes can do if he's, you know, if he's in the right temperament. But if you, you know, if, if you're already where they kind of want to drift or where they kind of want to be, you're, you're just in a better spot. And that just comes through repetition and better in your woodsmanship game. Yeah, but as far as calling scenarios go, I mean – I like to talk to them a little bit when they're in a tree. I just can't. Mm -hmm. I can't stand there. I can't. I can't (laughs) sit by a tree. I like hearing God. I don't care who says it. I have not met. I have not hunted with somebody yet that has not tried to yelp to a turkey in a tree. Like uh, not when he's sitting up there gobbling. You got to make contact. I can. I just kind of want my name in the hat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. (laughs) And it just makes your whole attitude better when he answers. Yes. yes. Oh, gotcha. Now I can think of one specific time. There's one specific time I can think of where it, if there's out of the two of us if there's one of us to get so excited they'll make an irrational decision it's going to be me okay so there was one time i think we were in florida and we set up where we planned to set up the morning before but we the turkeys weren't roosted exactly where we thought they were going to be they were way closer and there were way more hens and so this turkey there was two turkeys i think if i remember right and they were going just absolutely nuts though because there was a bunch of hens in the tree and they were yelping and cackling and carrying on and i looked at jordan and said i'm about to tree yelp and jordan just went why because <laughs> i mean we were just surrounded by them and i was like you know you have a good point i'm not all, I'm gonna, i want to see how just, good i sound this was a situation yeah. where there was like four hens within 50 yards of us <laughs> wow yeah i just couldn't i was like you know you make a very valid point there's really not any reason for me to yelp right now other than i just want to yeah. you know so. <laughs> I resemble that. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yes, you do. Yeah, yeah you just can't help it yes, sometimes. That's why we like going to the communication yeah. between you and the turkey. That's right. Uh, yeah, so. and we ended up killing the turkey that morning. Oh, so it did. worked out. I did. Yeah. yeah. Well, Dudley, have you got anything else you want to ask, Lanny? You know, what, so what about Mac? We hadn't asked yeah, Mac. Over well, there. I've been the looking at Mac and I asked you Mac, know, and he shook his head. No, he didn't have a question. But now, has that changed, Mac? Uh, he's texting now. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I think one thing that's always stuck out to me is is kind of the the bond between mossy oak and primos, and the bond between the the turkeys and and all of us and the conservation side of things. And and, and I know I listened to y'all's last podcast and talking about burning and seeing a lot more smoke and and talking about programs to to get in and and things like that as far as habitat uh what about on a trapping side are y'all doing much trapping uh where do you like to put your traps and things like that i fully admittedly like i talked about this on a i can't remember who i was talking to i i do not do as much of that as I should. And it's like, it's a part of this thing we are talking about when more people are burning, more people talking about trapping that kind of spurred me. I was like, all right, you know, I've got to kind of practice what I'm preaching here. You know, um, I can probably say Jordan probably feels the same way, which I know he was, Jordan was burning just a few weeks ago. Yep. As so on the trapping side of it, I just, I have not done much of it, period. I don't really know the art of it that much. Uh, it- that's just it is what it is on that part i want to it, there is an art to it and people no that are that are really into it know about it and they'll then you can ask the right person and they'll teach you i it, think it's coming back i mean no, it it, is. Yeah. there's a lot of oh, people that are becoming more aware yeah. about it you know a lot of the younger folks are doing it now so it's exciting to see and as far as burning you know i, I burned for the first time I look like burning. it's easier at, where, it's, at the ponderosa it's easier <laughs> Richie's okay. So it's easier to get a burn permit than it is to order a meal on the phone at at McAllen. Oh, they want you to light it up, and then you look on the news like fires everywhere. I think last week uh, it was like the day after Carter and I were up there burning uh, at his place that uh, there was like a news article the Mississippi Forestry Commission put out like forty six wildfires in Central Mississippi fault yesterday. Right. Well, one of our uh, one of our, our our close workers here, I won't mention any names. <laughs> Uh, but uh, was burning the track of his, and he thought it looked good. Had his camera set out there, said uh, he got a picture in the middle of the night of a bulldozer driving by <laughs> his camera. 
<laughs> cutting up the forestry commission going there cutting the fire lane. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, not good. No, Wait, that's a lot of, good. There's a bulldozer moving in there. <laughs> oh wow. And I think we all have a story, you know. I've I've already told mine, but it'll get away from me, but it is an unbelievable tool. And, you know, one of the best tools in a gamekeeper's chest, so yeah, it all works hand in hand, I think. I mean, I think, uh, honestly, my opinion on the two, which everybody's got their own opinion, I think the whole burning and taking care of your habitat is probably the most important thing you can do for a wild turkey. Right. I that's, mean, it, it, yeah. That's, that's just my they opinion. They don't have anywhere they can nest and eat, then. Uh, and you don't realize how much you ambush know. predation you're you're uh, you're working against by burning it. You know, you're giving them less spots for pulse to get eaten and yeah, stuff to eat. Yeah, kind of taking else. away the the predators, the hunting grounds. If you take away those corridor areas that a turkey's likely to nest, if you're not doing that, right? And you know, just forestry management and period creates the, those lines and those breaks between those timbers make great ambush points. So fire is one way to battle against mm-hmm. that. Well, look, guys, we've enjoyed having y'all. Uh, Lake, uh, it's been fun having you on the phone. You need to come by here again one day soon. How How is your dog doing? I, my dog is the best, is like my best quality about me. <laughs> <laughs> like I had a, uh, I had a guy, it's been a, uh, what is this past? I think it was two dove seasons ago. I mean, we were just hunting, having a good time. I mean, I love any chance to take the dog out. I like doing it. And I, I had a guy try to buy him off of me before I left the dove field. Oh, no. Does you, you know, yeah. and I was like, man, that, that's a hard no, but I appreciate the compliment. All right. Uh, you, yeah, you, no, he's, he's great. I mean, it's, you know. You got a good one. Me. You got, oh, he, yeah. he got he's one good. out of the Gamekeeper Kennels a few years ago. Yeah, I remember yeah. that. So. And, and Jordan, you be, you feel like you kind of grew up around here. We're real proud of you. I appreciate you, you, no you, doubt you, about you've it. You've done good. I would and, like uh, to be in here. And look, we do. We, we want to thank both of y'all for wearing Bottomland, wearing Mossy Oak. We see y'all all the time doing that. Yeah, everything's better in Bottomland. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, so, but uh, and look, uh, like we're gonna send some bison tacos or burrito, whatever those were we had yeah. for lunch with. Uh, <laughs> With the country George. and let him br- bring those. Uh, I, I country and joy. I get all. Yeah, we're gonna let him bring you something to eat. <laughs> there you go. Well, that's the best news I've heard all morning. Yeah, we're gonna put them in a to-go box. I just hope I don't lose them. <laughs> yeah. You better not. I already know they're coming. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but what Mark was saying about the relationship between Primos and Mossy Oak is, uh, you know, we're all in the same culture and we all think alike and do alike and. It all works hand in hand, so it's a, it was an easy transition for me when I left here and went to Primo's because it's really the same type of culture you're going into. You know? Yeah. The first ad that Mossy Oak ever did was with Will. Mm-hmm. It's a picture of Will and Toxie shaking hands in the spring woods. Yeah. It's classic. That's great. I, can't, I will tell you this. Like When I first went to the first uh, NWTF show a few years ago, like – I had a couple people come up to me and ask me if we're the same company. Oh, yeah. They think it. They think yeah. it. Because all the marketing strategy from years and years and years, it all intertwined both companies. They're just, I mean, you think about one, you think about the other. That's right. That's cool. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, so, Big Dud was on the cover of a cassette, of the very first, I guess, calling cassette tape <laughs> that Primo's put out. Yeah. I need to try and get oh, a awesome. copy of that picture. That's, that is neat. Right. Yeah, you do. Yeah. Well, guys, we enjoyed having y'all on here. And, uh, Lake, feel free to drop off. I feel like you've got something you need to do. We Normally at this time we do an Ask Dudley where Dudley ex- ex- puts his wisdom on us about something to do with trees. Uh, if we, if you don't mind, uh, Country, we'd love for you to hang around just a few more minutes yeah. and let us, let us get through this all together, mm-hmm. as I like to refer to it. See so, y'all tonight, Lake. Yeah, I appreciate y'all. Thank y'all. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mike, if you'll quit texting long enough, we'll get this Ask Dudley on the board. All right. Here we go. So the Ask Dudley is actually from me. Uh, it was a question I asked Dudley yesterday. Uh, <laughs> so I, I seem to do that a lot. So I get lucky on that regard. But so we recently thinned a block of pines, uh, and it was a decent sized block of pines, but there's there's loading decks all over the place and unfortunately they're they're pretty close to the road you know within a, hun- a couple hundred yards of the road and and, I, and my question was to Dudley what could I do to benefit the wildlife on the property in those loading decks is it wildflowers is it clover is it soft mass trees and and that that's I, I feel like a lot of people wonder that and so I what right. would you say I should do Dudley? and I'll uh 
I remember the question, and it was worded a little different. You were asking, what trees should I plant there? And uh, so it, it evolved. But we, uh, I was saying, you know, if you plant trees there, and, and this is a, a pine area, then those logging decks are going to be used again. And so I, I would hate for you to plant some cool oak trees in the middle of your logging deck, and then in eight years when it needs to be thinned again, they get run over. And so... Um, also, being close to the road, I don't know if you necessarily want to have a bunch of mass dropping right on the side of the road uh, during deer season. Uh, and, and oftentimes, those logging decks are up on a, on a ridge. Uh, that area has been previously probably farmed or whatever, and then the logging equipment gets on there and pushes the topsoil away and all that stuff. So it's really not the best soil either. So my vote would be to do uh, like some native grasses or wildflowers or, or or a mix of the two and then you know do some chickasaw plum or something on the edges where that where some of that topsoil has been pushed off and plant them on that and they'll grow really fast so lots of pollinators lots of bugging uh, could be a good area for hens to dust and nest near things like that that that's what i would focus on so yeah anyway. That answered the question. That's my final answer. Yeah, Lanny, you got something to. You look like you're about to say something. I just I love the the whole biodiversity that um, the grasses and the wildflowers and the, uh, the plants like chickasaw mix and plum just add to the whole mix. So I get excited to talk about them. Sorry. I think the best takeaway from that was if I can jump in here was Mac may not have been thinking that hey eight or ten years from now we might need these logging decks again. Uh, yes, correct. For sure. So Dudley pointing that out. Yeah, no, definitely. I, I think that's a re that's a good answer to that. And we did forget the commercial. And speaking of Dudley, he's been messing around with his shotgun for the last few days and getting it dialed in and, and starting to shoot. And so this week we want to talk about Apex Ammunition. Oh, it's I that mean, time. It is absolutely that time. I know they're coming back from NWTF and probably have no not shells. much on the shelves. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> if you out, want some, you better some. go ahead and get it. Probably too late. But well, I'd like to think it isn't too late. It's still <laughs> still February. You know they can make more. So, but it's some fantastic uh, aiming turkey ammunition. It's great stuff, and it's great people. Um, it's it's. Uh, I I like to have a relationship with people that I buy stuff from, and uh, they're they're just a great team of people. So. Apex and uh, the TSS shot is just incredible. If, I, yeah, I'm actually going to shoot a 410 this spring, and that's well, what I'm going to shoot. So, and I'll, I'll take your 12 gauge. <laughs> <laughs> so back, I'm looking forward to it. Up. It patterns yeah. incredibly well. It, it really does. That's uh, I'm just so impressed with it. So, what else have we got? Did, what did we learn? Did we learn anything at all today, Lane? I learned about turkey calls. You know, I, I I've been yelping on them a really long time, and. You know, when, when uh, country was talking about that air channel and everything else. Now, I, I yelp out of the middle and both sides. So, you talk um, out of both sides of your mouth. Both sides <laughs> of when I'm turkey Some people can do that. Yeah, you know? it, just to, to change up the pitch. And it's funny when you say that because that's why the pitch changes up because I'm starting to yelp out the left side and I'm trying to sound like two or three different turkeys mm -hmm. in one call. So, I never visualized that. You said, I was like, oh, that's that's why it is. So, I, I blow a bat wing more than anything. But right. Then, up and out of the right side or, or the left side, depending on um, how different I want to mix it well, up. Well, I got so aggravated myself a few years ago. I was like, why can I not blow a turkey call better? Like, yeah. I know the mechanics. I know, like, how the air works. Like, why can I not get the sound that I want? And I still can't do it as well as some other people. But when I figured out that, it helped out a lot. Yeah, and then after it, that, is, it's it's really the shape of your mouth. I'm, I've, I've said that before on here, but how much air there is in your mouth and how you're opening your lips and how much, uh, believe it or not, how loose your lips are, how tight your lips are yeah. go from there. So, anyways. Yeah, so, and you know, it, it's a, also a good time to point out, I mean, it's a great reason to take care of your teeth because— Matt just it, got it, back like, from like the Matt, dentist. Because if— <laughs> <laughs> if, if, if you have a if you have a tooth pulled or something, it will greatly impact how that whole thing works. I'm told. I'm told. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, I thought you I, had I, all your teeth. I, I, Is I that why you had teeth. that gap fixed? But, but I have a, I had can, a root canal, and they they better. did something, and it really it kind of changed things up a little bit for me. Hmm. How does it change up your difference on a box call? Because that's all you yelp on with your. No, it changes on a mouth call, oh. Lanny. It does. Inside I didn't joke. know you can. 
Yeah, up on them. Yeah, there's a lot about me you don't know. Right? <laughs> I doubt there, there are it. things that I keep secret. <laughs> I so, doubt it. <laughs> that you you already follow me around too much. If I did, if I if I pulled more out, I'd never get yeah, rid you're of exactly it. Exactly right. <laughs> well, well, Dudley, you learn anything? Uh, I just I learned a lot, and I, I can't. There's nothing really in particular. The, the mouth call stuff was cool. Yeah, yeah you'll learn cool. a lot tonight. I bet at the yeah, thing. for yeah. sure. So, Mac, you really got anything you need to, else you need to add? Richie, wake up. Just keep the public lands public. Keep the public yeah. lands public. That's right. That just makes no sense at all. So, well, you know, nah, nah, don't even get me off. Yeah, <laughs> nah, yeah. We don't have time for that. We ain't so. got time for that today. <laughs> so, uh, country, we've got you a levy sling. Look at that. In oh, bottom oh, land. So. I was eyeing that thing over there. Like, mm, that thing looked pretty slick. Yeah, I, I see appreciate it. it. Yeah, there you go. You're going to get one. And Blake's not going to get one. Because he, he didn't show good. up. Good. <laughs> he missed out <laughs> on the tacos. <laughs> Thank you for being here, Jordan. Jordan. Enjoy. Also known as Big Country, also known as Country, and uh, we appreciate you being here. Why don't you say goodbye, Dudley? Goodbye, Dudley. Get us out of here, Mac Mac. Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of the Gamekeeper Podcast, and be sure to tune in again. Subscribe to Gamekeeper Farming for Wildlife magazine, and don't miss the Mossy Oak Properties Fistful of Dirt podcast with my good buddy, Ronnie Cuz Strickland.